Nicholas Smith. I'm the president of Freedom Dolls Initiative, which is an NGO charity based in Cyprus. Uh, we've been operational now for about a year. Uh, I have a good team of volunteers behind us. Unfortunately, nobody gets a wage. Um, and we help victims of human trafficking here on the island. Uh, we help them in various ways, um, from an awareness campaign. For example, this Friday, 19th of June, we have a music festival, which will, the aim is to promote the issue of human trafficking on the island. Um, there are some people who feel that, uh, have no understanding of human trafficking and don't believe it happens at all. It doesn't happen. I have even had people say to me, um, oh, so you help victims of, um, victims of a traffic accident. That, so you, uh, you have this naivety uh, and ignorance, if you like, uh, in this day and age. So it's a good part of Freedom Doors is to create awareness and help people understand what we do. So we create the awareness. We have people uh, via the police, via churches, via personal one-to-one -one friends, somebody who knows somebody who contacts us and asks us to help individuals. We have minors and adults. Uh, female victims here on the island of all nationalities uh, you tend to find now that with the open border policy within Europe we have more traffic victims from uh, eastern countries Bulgaria Romania uh, Czechoslovakia uh, all those major states um, because it's cheaper and it's easier to traffic the girls in the past, you've mainly had sort of Philippines, Far Eastern victims. This open border policy has allowed traffickers easy access, quick access, less expense uh, to come here uh, and be trafficked here to Cyprus. Um, if I give you uh, an example of a story of one of our victims, is a Russian lady who came here uh, looking for employment. She'd spoken to a gentleman on the phone to uh, get a job. When she got here and got to the airport, he snatched her suitcase off her and near enough ran out the airport. Uh, they got to a very old battered car which started setting alarm bells off in her head. He wanted a passport and she kept questioning why, why you need it, why, and he kept saying for visa. She says, well, that's all right, I'll go and I'll get the visa myself. I, you don't need to have my passport. He then took her to a cafe. Um, at this point, I say to your viewers, uh, the language I'm about to use is quite vulgar, but it's the language that was used by the trafficker. Um, so I want to get across to you what was said to the victim. So uh, please stop the tape for a couple of seconds if you don't want to hear such language, I'm afraid. So when she uh, got in the car, the gentleman, the gentleman, the trafficker took her to a small roadside cafe. He got her a coffee and they sat down and he said, you will fuck me now. I want you to fuck me now. She said, whoa, what do you mean? What do you mean? I've come here to work. He said, yes, you will now live with my, my wife, my two children. You will fuck me now. You will fuck me now so I know how good you are. When I know how good you are to fuck, I will then sell you to other men and I will tell them how you fuck. She said, whoa, no, I didn't come here for this. And luckily there was a car across the way. She went over to the car and she said, please, can you help me? Can you take me back to the airport? And the gentleman in the car said, no, I can't, I'm afraid, but I'll ring you a taxi. She then went back to a table. While she was sat at the table, uh, three men arrived that the trafficker had called. She ran back to the car and got into the car. Uh, the men circled the car continually 
intimidating both the man in the car and the woman. She got out. When the taxi arrived, she got in the taxi. She got back to the airport on a plane back in Russia. To this day, this poor lady is corresponding with me via email and Skype continually for um, reassurance that it wasn't her fault. She didn't do anything wrong. Um, and trying to understand the situation. So we have different uh, levels of victims, if you like. Uh, we also have uh, children and adults um, who are trafficked by their family. We have Cypriot victims as well as uh, international victims. So you have a wide, uh, you do have a wide range of victims here on the island. Freedom Dolls uh, is not the only NGO in Cyprus. There are many other people on the island doing good work to help victims of human trafficking. Where Freedom mm -hmm. Dolls is different is the rehabilitation. Uh, once the victims have been brought to us through the different avenues, um, we then do a long-term uh, process for rehabilitation. And this is done in several ways. For example, if they want to better their education and get their Cypriot uh, schooling license uh, certificate, we help them with their Greek. If they want mm -hmm. to learn English, we give them English lessons. Chinese lessons I can give them. Whatever they want in language skills, we provide. Then we provide things like cookery lessons, because some of the victims were trafficked when young, uh, locked away, so have no idea how to go and buy a loaf of bread, how to buy a pint of milk, how to succeed, how to go and pay your electric bill. The life skills that you and I take for granted, these things are difficult. So we do training programs to help them with everyday skills in life. So the girls, uh, when they're rescued, if they can sew, because not all of us can, but uh, the girls that can sew, they make the Freedom Dolls, which is a small doll that is uh, sold then and the money recuperated back to the girls. It comes back to the girls. Uh, we have many different dolls. We started with just a small girl doll. However, we got many requests over the year, and we now do soldiers, sailors, pirates uh, for little boys. And then uh, we also uh, sort of pay it back, if you like, because we make dolls that have no hair. So for children who suffer from alopecia or maybe they've had cancer and chemotherapy, so that sort of way, and also we have dolls made that are missing uh, limbs, an arm or a leg, um, and this helps either the child who has been in an accident or had an illness and had to lose a limb, or it uh, helps the child if a parent has come back from war uh, mm -hmm. to understand that uh, dad or mom uh, is missing an arm when they come back. And this helps uh, the child as well. We also have dolls that are crying, um, and although this is sad, it is part of the rehabilitation for the girls. We don't tell them how to make the dolls at all. They're given a basic lesson of this is the structure of the doll and how you make the structure. There you go. It's up to them how they dress it, how they put the face on the doll. And if they're not feeling happy one day, you will find that some of the dolls have tears or they're sad. Um, and this is again just part of the therapy. Most importantly for me is the interaction of organizations like myself with other countries. Getting to agencies um, that work in uh, Romania there yeah, and working with them. How many girls came over here, where they came from, the areas they came from the names of the people trafficking them from Romania, not just trying to help the end result, stopping it at the beginning, that's important.